The voters, pollsters call Latino voters, chose President-elect Trump in record numbers. That's not a surprise here in South Florida, where the Cuban-American vote is and has been overwhelmingly Republican. But a big surprise nationally, where the demographic is so diverse and was reflecting something different in the polling even a week before the election. Dr. Eduardo Gamara is professor of political science at Florida International University and director of FIU's Latino Public Opinion Forum, which did one of those polls released last week. Dr. Gamara, it's great to have you on the program. Thank you for having me. So are you shocked? No, not really. I mean, Florida was fairly predictable. Uh, what I am shocked by is the shift that has occurred uh, in, uh, for example, in places like Southern Texas, uh, the fact that there are even pockets within California that are that are now solidly Republican, uh, that uh, the electoral map around the country looks very, very different than it did in 2020. So, tell so me, there, there I, are some shocks uh, yeah. and many of them driven, in fact, by minority voters. So I want to get just kind of before we really get into a couple of things in the short time we have together, define for us what is the Latino vote? I feel weird even talking about that because <laughs> Latinos are a so diverse culturally and by nationality, but above anything else, everyone I know who's Latino American, I consider American. So what is a Latino vote that's not necessarily just an American vote? Yeah, that, that's a very good question because in fact, the polling that we do is of US citizens, either naturalized or who are born here. And what we're seeing increasingly is that those who are born here and uh, um, and those who have been here for several generations are voting increasingly like the average uh, American. And so, for example, it's not surprising that Latinos didn't vote on identity issues. They voted more on issues that affect all of us. They, they voted on the economy above all. And uh, they voted on inflation, for example, which is largely what drove what drove the, the, the average voter. But the one thing we were really quite surprised by is the fact that Latinos, or, um, and we can define them a little later, but that they generally adopted the very same postures about immigration that the average American voted. So 40% of Latinos that we polled agreed with Donald Trump's most extreme version of rounding up uh, illegal immigrants and deporting them. Hmm. I want to put up what, what I thought was really interesting. You mentioned the economy. We have, uh, I pulled one of the graphics out of your poll, and it was the graphic how you describe the current state of the U.S. economy. And we're actually, we have it up on our screen right now. And it was like a two to one vote, U.S. Latinos uh, on our left. In the middle is swing state Latinos, Florida Latinos on the right, all reflect a two to one split about Harris taking better care of the economy than the Republicans or the Biden-Harris administration. A and yet the vote <clears throat> by the economy certainly went the other way. Certainly, certainly. Now, again, one of the important things that we have to understand is that nationally, uh, there are more people who identify as Latinos or Hispanics who also identify with the Democratic Party. But yet the shift that we found in our surveys was between 10 and 15 percentage points. And that was enough to give the Republicans a victory. And that's interesting because another graphic that I pulled, you flat out in this poll asked these uh, respondents in November, 2024, who will you vote for? I mean, that's a pretty clear question. And again, it was about two to one, a little less than two to one, and definitely less than two to one in Florida. But nationally, these Latino respondents are telling you they were going to vote for Kamala Harris. And yet across exactly. the board, they did not. Yeah. But what you what, what our poll shows, if you look at it, it's that 30 percent or more, 35 percent in some some states that said that they would not vote for Cam Kamala. That's where the shift occurred. We began asking a question, in the last year, have you shifted political parties? And we got 15% of our respondents said that they had shifted political parties. Over 30% uh, said that they had gone from the Democratic to the Republican Party, and in Florida, 42%. Um, that's approximately, nationwide, 
uh, it's about uh, 5.4 million people, million Latinos who say that they've shifted political parties. And what do you attribute that to? Is that the messaging on the economy, and specifically in South Florida, the messaging on the economy is we don't want to be quote unquote socialist, which by the numbers doesn't really reflect in, in right. real life, but certainly what a strong message to South Florida Republicans who actually do know what a socialist dictatorship is like. Yeah, I think the messaging had something to do with it, Glenna, but I, but I think there's more, more to it than that. Uh, I always say that uh, Democrats don't do three things. They start, or they do three things. They start late, they take the community for granted, and they also don't field very good candidates. So apart from the messaging, which they also got wrong, for example, in response to the socialist message, continuing to use the progressive label doesn't work in this community. But above all, I think it's those three points that I made. Unless Democrats can dramatically uh, change that kind of behavior in Florida and nationwide, for that matter, they will now be, a, you know, maybe a permanent second party in Florida. Such fascinating work, Dr. Eduardo Gamara, FIU political science professor. So great to have you on the program. Thank you very much.